Hey guys, Romans chapter 8, verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So this chapter is amazing. It starts out with no condemnation, no guilt sentence, uh, no uh, doom hangs over the head of those who identify with Jesus. There's a remedy for shame and guilt and condemnation and sin, and it's the sacrifice of what Jesus purposed to do and achieved 2,000 years ago over there in the Middle East in the fulfillment of over 300 prophecies in the Hebrew Scriptures foretelling and forecasting we would have a visit from God. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting our trespasses against us. You can't get that anywhere else. I mean, I, I've seen my share of self-help books, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm always striving for self-improvement in just about every area. And uh, you, know, you work out, and you, you try to eat right, and you try to guard your heart and your thought life and your eyes and what you, what you look at and what you listen to and what you think about. You, know, you, you repent. You're quick to repent and ask for forgiveness and humble yourself and submit to God. All in this context, however, that there's no condemnation for those in Christ. He's not there guilting and shaming us because Jesus, in fact, took our guilt, took our shame. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace fell upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. That's my Jesus, that's what, that's what would make you want to adhere to him and think about him while you're walking through the grocery store or going past the produce trying to figure out you know, where, to, where the coffee is and that kind of thing. Just every step, it's like, thank you, God, for the relief and the, you, the coverage and the, the work you did on the cross for us human beings. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for suffering and dying to forgive us, no condemnation. And then at the end of this book, Paul the Apostle says, he says, in all these things we're more than conquerors. And he said, I am convinced that nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So this chapter starts out with no condemnation, and it ends with no separation. I mean, in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5, he says, I'll never, he says uh, that, that he'll never forsake us. You know, he, he's, he says, I, I'm, I'm with you always, even to the ends of the earth, it says in the end of Matthew chapter 28. And I'll never leave you nor forsake you is a kind of an assurance for people who have had absentee parents, deadbeat dads, uh, you know, dysfunction in your family, that kind of thing. You know, like David said, my mother and my father have forsaken me, but you will hold me up. You'll be, you'll be there for me. And so Paul is saying no condemnation, and he's saying nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God which comes to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the Knox translation. 20th, 20th century says the love of God revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. And the good speed says nothing shall separate us from the love of God that has been shown in Christ Jesus our Lord. So for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but will have eternal life. God didn't send his son into the world to judge or condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is why it's called the gospel. It's why it's called good news. It's good news. You know, he, it's an imperative. You must be born again to, to get in on the blessing of this. When you do, it's game on. He's, he sets you free from the law of sin and death. You become a brand new creation. You know, you're worth the blood of Jesus, therefore worthy. And I think if, you know, if you've distanced yourself from this and kind of identified as, a, as an atheist or an agnostic, now would be a good time to rethink that. You know, it's appointed for a man to die once, and after this comes judgment. It's not just eternal oblivion. 
It is eternal. You do exist. You don't just have cessation of life. You're eternal. You, you definitely will live forever. And there's a hell to avoid and there's a heaven to gain. And Jesus furnished the way out. No condemnation, no separation from the love of God. He loves you. He really does. God bless you.